We thought the war at last. How did she get the ones up the top there? That's the story I really want to find out. Evil does not sleep. Yeah, this is Amazon. They don't even give him time for a pee break. You just hear Galadriel, the moment we feared. San Diego Comic-Con has arrived and with it a full Rings of Power trailer. We've got lots of new scenes and cast interviews all over the place. And it's not looking good. But first, here's a selection of best bits. Find the light and the shadow will not find you. Strange way of telling people they should be watching the original trilogy. Each of us must decide who we shall be. And it looks like she's decided to be somebody who isn't Galadriel. Fight with me. Yeah, I think I'll pass. I judge art by a simple measure. If I can do it, then it's awful. And I think I can judge warriors by the same measure. If I can beat you in a fight, then you're trash. Together we can survive this! I mean, we were. Lots of fans were commenting on all of your trailers. And yet you kept deleting them. Sure, we'll survive, but how many brothers will fall in the meantime? You have been told many lies of Middle Earth. But the rest of us just called that the law. It only became a lie when you wanted to change it. <laughs> it's enough to drive anyone to tears. Now this was a full trailer. A lot more than just the random people looking at things that we've had before. This at least tries to tell a story, but the key part is in the middle when the music hits a crescendo and it just starts showing all the people on screen which are going to be the main cast of the show. These are the people that he wants to raise up. The people he wants to highlight as the driving force of the show. I'm not really sure what happened to the little female hobbit foot person, but for the rest, there does seem to be a pattern. Find the light and the shadow. Fight with me. Each of us. The other. Oh, you're writing too much into it. Hold your horses. Let's see what the cast have to say. But first, there are some exceptions. Some people who managed to pierce the veil. I shall live in. Together we can survive. Yes, we've got a Hollywood obsessed elf, a dwarf, and just a boring old cream guy. Can't imagine why he's there. But alongside the trailer, we also got the cast to speak out and give interviews. That's always a good idea. That's how we end up with articles like this. Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, it's still a really awkward title. Star credits show bosses for giving female characters agency. We don't serve the men around us. Yes, that's right, in Rings of Power, nobody gets a sandwich. What I love about the writers of this show is that we have a storyline and our own right because that never happened before in any TV series ever for decades. The difference is that previously it was done for good storytelling, whereas now it's done so that we can brag about it and talk about how amazing it is. And that's only ever done for one reason by one group of people. The people who want to give a boost to their ego and self-esteem because they know they don't have any talent. We're just going to use this as a shield against the criticism we know we're going to get because we know what we've done to the work. And so we're going to put it front and center in the hopes that nobody dares comment about it. And and this is an actress who has a way with storytelling herself, where it says she's a healer. She taps into her inner lioness. And I am an activist. I'm a longtime rights activist from my homeland, Iran. I tapped into what I believe type Bs are doing for my homeland, which is interesting considering she says she's an activist, but only believes what people are doing in her homeland. You'd think if you were that big of an activist, you'd know because you'd be doing it yourself. Except there's a reason why she has no idea what's going on in her homeland. Because according to Wikipedia, she was born over there, but then left less than a month after her birth, where she moved to England and that's where she was raised. Going to an independent school in Hampstead of all places before moving on to university in California. But assuming Wikipedia is correct, don't worry about the reality of the situation. No, instead we'll just talk about situations that have got nothing to do with us for brownie points and in interviews. And if you're thinking, oh no, this is just one person. This is just one interview talking about it. It might just be personal for her. Oh no, it isn't. Welcome to another British Rings of Power star who says my character is the face of necessary redress of balance. This isn't just a personal preference of her. No, this is necessary. It's required. There is no other option except to do exactly what she tells you to do. The series would help create accessibility for generations to come. Now, I'm not really sure what accessibility we're talking about. Is it a ramp or instead, are we just going to talk about the chemical composition of your skin? Because at this point, the conversation's getting really quite old about it. Of any place that you could possibly try and have this conversation, the UK really isn't the place to do it because it comes across as if you just don't have eyeballs to look around at any media in the entire nation. Because the truth is that nobody cares. You're not in America in the 1950s. We never had that over here. It's an irrelevant conversation. But that would mean that actually you're just a rebel without a cause. And if you didn't have that cause, you'd have to fill your life with other things of actual meaning. 
And that's difficult. Now, there is this article and panel, which we'll likely get to another time, but it has one of the questions in it, where it says Colbert, who I just always want to call Colbert, promised the crowd he'd ask all of the important questions, like, why do elves get short haircuts and where is the salon? And do female dwarves have beards? In response to the latter question, Lindsay Webber verified that they do actually have beards, although Deezer, recently shown on the posters, is smooth-faced as a dwarf. I can't imagine why the character would have been subjected to such rampant shame and humiliation, but apparently, uh, yeah, that makes it really accessible. Must just be some kind of weird personal preference that generally you'd keep private to yourself, but I suppose when you wear it on your face, you can't. Does actually make that IGN interview and all the fan sites look a bit weird though, doesn't it? No, we're defending, actually, no, they don't have beards, they don't have beards. Uh oh. Oh, now even Rings of Power are saying they do. Let's face it, we know they didn't want to, it's just that they realised they didn't have any other choice because they were wrong and people kept calling them on it. If you ever wanted an example of how your voice matters when it comes to these kind of things, this is it. Provide people the shame they deserve, and if enough voices speak out, you can actually get things done. And sure, it's a minor step, but when people have proven that they'll move, they'll move more. But Deezer is anything but a small dwarf character on the screen. No, her part in this role is changing the world. This isn't just a necessary redress of balance. It's within the entire entertainment industry. The British actress, which means she hasn't actually suffered in the entertainment industry over here at all, but she's going to whine about it anyway to try and forge her career into the future, says this will affect generations to come. Can't really imagine being so egotistical that you think being a dwarf on screen will actually affect future generations but apparently it's all about us and how amazing we are in these interviews. For younger viewers, the show would be their first exposure to Tolkien's universe. I don't know who you think's watching this show. Anyone that's going to watch the show will have certainly watched the movies first, largely because they'll be better. I don't know what this idea is that younger people just don't watch actual good movies from the past, but if it's true, I kind of feel a sorry for them. Her character Deezer is the first type B depiction of a dwarf ever shown within the franchise. That's not true. Then we will repeat the lie that she was the first type B dwarf ever to be on screen, and then she's not just just redressing the balance. No, now she's affecting film, television, the television industry, this franchise, and every franchise moving forwards. I don't really understand how self-absorbed, arrogant, and egotistical one person can actually be. I'm not just lying on camera for a wage packet. No, I'm literally changing the earth and the future of the universe. <laughs> And how are you doing that, darling? Well, have you seen my arm? I can go out into the sun without any suntan lotion on, and that is an incredible feat of nature which will have long-lasting impact across all of entertainment. This is literally the least important thing about me, but because it's all I have in my life as a personality, it's the only thing I can ever talk about. And then, after obsessing about that for half of the article, we then go on to say, these are the best people for the roles. Are they? Because you didn't make it sound like it before. All of the people themselves made it sound as if they were only hired for one reason, and it wasn't their talent. So you can understand why it makes it seem that you didn't actually hire off merit, because if you did, they would instead talk about, yeah, this is what I've done. I love this role, and I think I'm going to be a great character. Not about how well they can tan at the beach. For new generations, this is their version of Tolkien. Except it's got literally nothing to do with Tolkien. Which the showrunners already admitted when they said they deliberately went back throughout the history to find an area which he hadn't written about so that they could write their story, not his. Doesn't really sound like any version of Tolkien to me. This is what my daughter will see of Tolkien's works. And for that, you should actually probably be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> yes, I will take my future children to Gordon Ramsay's restaurant and then get him to serve them beans on toast. That is what my children will see of Gordon Ramsay's culinary talents. And in fact, if I want that analogy to be truly rings of power, I should just get the homeless guy outside to cook it for him. It's their time and it's so important. I want so many people to be able to relate to it. Well, you see, the wonderful thing about just being a normal human being who has emotions and empathy is that you can relate to literally anybody. There's a word for the people who can't relate to people that don't look like themselves. Psychopaths. And if I said Hollywood seems to be full of psychopaths, I don't think anyone would be that surprised. She continued, This is a reflection of the world we live in. Except it shouldn't be. We don't live in Tolkien's universe. What are you doing? It should not be a reflection of our world. It should be a reflection of Tolkien's world the way he wrote it. And the fact that you need to come and say this means that you know it isn't. Because you know why they've changed it all. And those ideas are antithetical to Tolkien itself. And this is why when you take his universe and apply your ideas to it, 
you just end up destroying it. Which is why it's so hilarious every time you release a trailer talking about how darkness is spreading across Tolkien's world. Then we get more egotistical and arrogant drivel talking about how them being on a poster is amazing. If Tom Cruise came out to advertise Top Gun 2, and instead of thanking the fans for actually paying to see the movie and saying he was making the movie for them and he hopes they're really entertained, if he came out and went, look, I'm on that poster and I made a fortune on this show, I'm changing the world. Do you think people would be quite so enamored by him? Particularly strange when this is a British person and uh, shows absolutely no humility or humbleness in any way, shape or form. Not even a veneer of it. This whole attitude is as alien to British culture as the very beliefs themselves. But don't worry, because once again, in two sentences, she manages to contradict herself. The conversation is different right now. Well, it doesn't matter what the conversation is right now at all, considering these books were written back in the 1950s. And so it doesn't matter what conversation you have. It's irrelevant. Your only job is to accurately represent what was written previously. And you're not interested in that though, are you? Because you're going back to the source material, of which you have none, except some appendices, and go, and now we're just adding in people from different diverse backgrounds. Yes, what you did was you took something and then you decided to change it all because the conversation is different right now. This has nothing to do with Tolkien, or what Tolkien wrote, or even what he wanted. Because you don't actually care about that. You care about your conversation right now. You care about changing it. You care about altering it. You care about making it fit your beliefs. Because when it comes down to the actual world of Tolkien, Tolkien's desires, Tolkien's legacy, or anything else, you don't care. To you, it's just another tool you can use to push your ideas. Your ideas, which you know are, uh, modern. You know they don't come from any part of history and haven't built on any previous traditions, no. They're obsessed with actually burning everything that came before. That is why you say that you're trying to look at Tolkien through a modern lens. That the world is global and people expect to see this kind of world globally represented. What world? Tolkien's world? Because you can't comprehend that our world and Tolkien's world is different. Because to you, it's not a world, it's not a universe, it's not a holistic piece which is finished, which had an intention behind it. It was built for a reason, with an aesthetic that was chosen and locked down. But you don't want that, you want the modern world. You want to change it into our world. And as we've shown previously in the article, you're arrogant enough to think that you have the right to do it. Because you don't actually care about anyone else or their desires or their creations. It's all about you and what you can get out of it. That's why Muriel talked about how the cast is global. Everyone has their culture, their heritage, what it means to them. It's all about what it means to them. It's all about their opinions, their light, their modern lens. And the only person who's not referenced there is Tolkien. They don't care about his culture, his heritage, and what it means to him. No, we can destroy that. We can destroy that culture, that heritage, and that legacy. Because what we've got here is a set of modern ideas, which have come from a foreign nation. This is an alien, third-party set of beliefs, which are desperately trying to subvert everything else that comes before them. Doesn't matter what the IP is, this is just the largest one. But it comes in and says, I can do this better. I can improve it, because it's all about me. And that is why the ideas appeal to everybody who's self-obsessed. Because it allows them to put themselves at the center of the universe, rather than somebody else. Rather than somebody from another time, with different beliefs than them. You have two groups of people. The people who can respect his beliefs, whether they agree with them or not, because they understand that he created a work of literature which is loved by enough people in order to make that valuable. And then you've got everyone else who think that they know better. They can change whatever they want because their ideas are the better ones. They have no concept of building on what came before or iterating on things to maybe improve them over time. They don't even take on board anyone else's concept because for them, values and principles don't matter. What matters to them is them and what can they get out of it? Because what we get out of it is to appear on a poster and change the entire entertainment industry with not just this IP, but every other franchise moving forwards. So for anyone wondering why I talk about the things I do, why I choose these topics to talk about, the answer is simple. Because it matters. And the only way we can stop this attack on what came before is about three things. To speak out against it wherever we can to defeat their arguments. To laugh at the inevitable disaster that they make to defeat their egos. And most importantly, to hit them where it hurts. In their wallets. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.